Welcome to the Buck Stops here, the official podcast of NotInHallOfFame.com, and I'm your host, the Buck, Kirk Buckner, owner, operator of NotInHallOfFame.com, and its sister sites, the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame and the Fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, it's a pretty big day as the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Blue Ribbon panel has announced the 20 possibilities of who it might be to join the regular class of the Pro Football Hall of Fame for 2020. And if you're going to talk about it, you got to bring in Vinny Laspinuso. And our resident pro football expert, as always, has a lot to say. And without further ado, here's Vinny. Vinny, how you doing? Uh, I know it's. I already know the answer. It's good. You're happy. How can we not be? The Pro Football Hall of Fame has announced the finalists for the, for the Blue Ribbon Senior Committee, and it's a good list. I've been waiting for this for over a year, and now that I'm seeing the finalists, I would say there's not one person on there that I am upset is on there. I think every single one of those names that they listed as finalists, completely deserving, all of them. Uh, I totally agree. Uh of course, there's going to be some people who are going to look at some stubs, and I, I guess there are, but again, when I look at this, there's not one person, not one name on this list that I'm thinking, huh? Why them? Not not one. And for this, this could really usher in something very, very special. Uh, five of the, or sorry, 10 of these players, uh, or former players, are going to be getting in, three coaches, two contributors, and perhaps we'll see in the future where they're going to have a larger senior class. Because if they're mentioning these people now, they all have Hall of Fame credentials. They all belong in some capacity. Uh, and it, it's, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I think this is a, a great step forward to a larger Pro Football Hall of Fame, which I know some people prefer it when it's sort of smaller, but you can't compare this to other sports when there's just so many people and so many moving pieces. Not only that, I should mention that whenever people say, I want the hall to be small, they're all lying to themselves. They're just putting on that charade because of one reason, because they want the guys that they want only, and if anyone questions it, they're not deserving. Yeah, no, and, uh, you know, obviously I've got uh, personal biases here. I, I try to keep myself as neutral as possible, and... For the most part, I think I, I'm, I'm successful in that, but uh, let, let's just run down the players who they've chosen, and we'll just go alphabetical order uh, in for the finalists. Cliff Branch, Harold Carmichael. Oh, oh Cliff Branch. I mean, they're, they're, all, they're all great, so we'll, we'll, I'll just list them. And then just, uh, I want to hear from you, if you, like, what ones are you the most happy about? I think I know the answer, but uh, we'll just list them all first. Uh, Cliff Branch, Harold Carmichael, Jim Covert. Roger Craig, Bobby Dillon, Laverne Delwig, Ox Emerson, Randy Gratisher, Cliff Harris, Winston Hill, Cecil Lisbell, Alex Karras, Vern Llewellyn, Tommy Nobis, Drew Pearson, Donnie Shell, Duke Slater, Max Speedy, Ed Sprinkle, Al Wister. I love all of them. I literally love every one of these. Okay, but you've got to be ha I know you're super happy for Slater. That, you've been banging on that drum since I've met you. Again, he is the best person out in the Hall of Fame. I think out of all these, the biggest snub that's not in the Hall of Fame is easily Duke Slater. I mean, he is a player that I've wanted for a while. And the reason why I have so much passion is because you always get those people that come up and say, how much did you actually know about him? You never saw him play. And so, why should you ask him for Duke Slater? You never saw him play. How do you really know? Simple. I use something called Google. It's my friend. <laughs> not, not only that, Duke Slater was the very first African-American lineman, and it was the reason for Ernie Nevers' uh, touchdown record in one game, as well as the Cardinals' nine-touchdown record in one game. And he also became a lawyer. He got his law degree when he was playing. Yeah, and... I think... Yeah. So that's got to be the one that you're the happiest about. If if you could have just like one vote, that's the guy you'd pick, my isn't it? My one vote would be Duke Slater. If I only had to choose one, it would be Duke Slater. Yeah, and I, I can't disagree with that. Uh, my selfish nature here, uh, I'm super happy that Roger Craig is on this list. Uh, I not see that. I, I Now, the reason why I didn't see it happening was because I didn't know if they would get guys that just just 
fell off the monorail. You know, I thought that he'd wait maybe a few years. But well, Roger Craig, they got it. They say, bravo, mm-hmm. bravo, bravo. Roger Craig is one of the biggest omissions from the Hall of Fame. The fact that he was a semifinalist so many years in a row, only been a finalist once, it's just criminal. Roger Craig needs to be in. He's the only one. He's the only running back in the 80s all-decade team that's not in the Hall of Fame. Just put in Roger Craig. It just was a no-brainer. Yeah, and I, I, as I'm looking at this, I mean, I, I would have my personal 10. But if it even went the other 10, I wouldn't even be that upset. Like, that's how strong I think this group is. Very strong. Extremely strong. All right, so uh, we'll go back to this uh, a little bit later. Just, let's just run down the coaches. Don Coriel, no surprise there. Bill Cower, Tom Flores, Mike Holmgren, Jimmy Johnson, Buddy Parker, Dan Reeves, Dick Vermeil. Again, great, uh, great, great choices. Great choices. Now, this is a little more recent, but I don't have an issue with that because these are all guys that have had an impact on the game. Um, I know one of these is obviously going to be a lock, but when you really think about it, I like to see it more as a, co- a list of seven head coaches and one makes it because one of them is a surefire lock. Yeah, actually, none of these sort of bring that up. Uh, I think the fact that when I'm looking at some of the players here, I want, I want to go back. I'm sort of going out, out of order here. But do you think the fact that you've got that Roger Craig is alive helps him as opposed to Duke Slater, who's not? Not really, because there's, I mean, when you look at this, you have like half the guys on here at least are dead. So I don't really think it helps or hurts because you're going to get at least a couple, a few handful that are dead. So I don't think it really impacts it one way or another. Yeah, but I'm More just half thinking for dead. ceremonial purposes. True. But I, I do think, you know, I think you will get a couple guys that are alive on here, a couple guys that are alive. Yeah, and there's certainly uh, some to choose from. Uh, so with the contributors, Bud Adams, Ralph Hay, Bucko Kilroy, Art McNally, Art Modell, Clint Murchison, Steve Sable, Seymour Siwoff, I hope I'm pronouncing that one right, Paul Tagliabue, George Young. I love all. Yeah. I love every single one of them. Granted, granted I, will, I will talk about the snubs later, but either way, I think this is a great list of contributors. Um, all of them are on the list that I'm currently building. Mm-hmm. It's it really is. They really took a nice crop. If I thought they put too much on the owner or too much on the, yeah, they have the mostly owners. But owners, I know people want to say owners don't work. No, owners have the biggest impact on the team. Period. No question. Not only that, like you got some really interesting ones. Like you have a statistician on here. You have a filmmaker on here. You have an official on here. You have you know the commissioner on here. You have a couple executives on here. It's a nice crop to choose from. Very nice, very nice, you know, crop that really shows the entire fabric of the game as opposed to just one part of it. Okay. So same question I asked before. Uh, if you're in that room and you're just allowed to pick one coach and one contributor, contributor, who does Vinny pick? I would pick Don Coryell because mm-hmm. out of all the coaches on here, he impacted the game the most by far. That's why I think out of all the coaches, he's the clear lock. And as for the one contributor, I choose Ralph Hay because if it wasn't for him, the very first meeting of the NFL, the entire founding of the NFL would not exist if it wasn't for Ralph Hay. Okay. Also, the Hall of Fame being in Canton, that would not exist if it wasn't for Ralph Hay. Yeah, and I, I'm actually with you on, on both of those. But again, like mm-hmm. if any whoever gets in on this list would that would make me happy. But you did something braver than than I did, Vinny. Uh, you put on that hazmat suit. And you went into the comments. I, I didn't do that. So what what are the people saying in the first uh, couple uh, hours after this reaction? It, it, it's one of the most, when it comes to all things, that this is what, it's easily one of the most toxic I've ever stepped in. It, it's easily one of the most toxic. No question. A lot of people are furious, especially if you live in Ohio. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I saw briefly uh, some things uh, on, on Twitter, people very upset that Art Modell is here. Uh, that's, uh, so, I'm assuming what you're referring those, to. Those Brown fans are just so, I've never seen so much hate towards one human being by a fan base. I mean, it's honestly disgusting. I understand he's a billionaire, but at the same time, you're just going to blame it all on Modell. You're not going to give any blame at all towards the government of Cleveland, Ohio at all. You're not really going to put it all on 
Odell? You mean like how time when that one fan literally defecated on his tombstone? And you don't spend that energy for looking at Max Speedy and seeing how he's a massive omission that needs to be in, but no, you can choose to waste all your energy on Art Modell being on there? Come on, guys. Seriously, where, where's your priority? Where's your priority? Seriously. <laughs> it, well, it's always a lot easier to hate than to love. Yeah, it's true. It is a lot easier to hate than to love. <laughs> that, that, yeah. I, can't, I can't argue with that. Yeah. Uh, Raiders fans, what are we hearing from them? Uh, surprisingly a little bit quiet because they, I'm pretty sure a lot of them are happy. Most of them are happy that Cliff Branch and Tom Floor is on here. But you did see a couple people that were annoyed that there was no Jim Plunkett. But <laughs> at the same time, said, guys, you already have two of them on here. Um, no quarterback you know either, no, for that matter. It was a, I mean, it was, come on, guys. I mean, you have at least two of them on here. It's okay. Don't be too upset. Just calm down, and it'll be okay. But then again, there could be a chance that neither Flores nor Branch makes it. So if that does happen, uh, I'm going to have to step on back on the hazmat suit and just see uh, what kind of um, poisonous uh, well I step into. And what else, are, what else are you seeing online that really jumped out at you? The bit, uh, easily the biggest snub that I've seen from people was by far not even questioned by a very, very long, just mild Ken Anderson from the from mm-hmm. Twitter. Twitter says easily Ken Anderson is the biggest snub that, that's on here, easily. And I agree with that. I think Ken Anderson, out of all the guys that are considered that are not on here, I thought Ken Anderson for sure would be on this list. I really did think he was a lock to make this list. And he didn't make it, which is crazy considering he's been a heavily discussed candidate by mm-hmm. fans and even some voters. And I also, and like, like literally, like I said, the entire state of Ohio, Bengals fans in that comment section, they were just tearing. And I really mean tearing into. The, the voters, which by the way, half of them are half of them or are actually are in the Hall of Fame, half of them are not. Like the voters, like some are close to the game, some are former players, and some are actual uh, voters on the regular uh, modern era committee. Like a lot of them, just they just tore like like not as much as Modell, but Anderson was a lot. There was. Many, and I mean many people that just went ballistic over this. Just ballistic. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, I, I get tired of just sort of like uh, reading the same comment, such and such is a joke because so-and-so is not in there. Uh, to me, it's like the weakest argument you can ever just say is it's a joke because you're adding nothing to conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, no quarterbacks on this list at all. What? No quarterbacks at all. No, that, that's not true. There's one. Keith the list, Bell. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, you're right. I'm just thinking of the of the traditional quarterbacks, I guess, I guess of the modern era. Yeah, like, they're, they're, yeah, but it, Keith the list, Bell was a very, very integral piece of, the, of Curly Lambeau's offense. Oh, I know. No, I, I, I totally understand. I, I guess when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm saying quarterback, I mean, because he was more of a back than a quarterback. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, uh, what else are what else is uh, the are the people saying that? Like, what's another thing that uh, just keeps jumping out? Uh, be, well, I, I said Ken Anderson, Ken Riley. I'm hearing a lot too that this Bengals fan just unleashing their their rage. It's really just both those there's Anderson and Riley. Which I'm a little shocked that Riley's on here, but then again, I'm also not that surprised. Another one I saw a lot is the fact that a lot of Jets fans were mad that Joe Flecko was not on here. A lot of them were upset that Joe Flecko was not on this list, which I understand, but at the same time, you know, Winston Hill's on the list, so it's not like you have no Jets representation. No, very true. Uh, Are Falcons fans happy about Tommy Nobis? They're usually, they're, they they should be. Um, They're not really saying a, a lot, like, they're happy, but... They're not over the moon happy. That they are happy about it. But, so, uh, are you seeing some like good positive comments? Like, what's the most positive thing that you've been that you've been noticing, either on Twitter or uh, on the discussion boards? Well, people were very hard happy that Art, Art McNally's on that list. Mm-hmm. I saw that were very happy that Roger Craig made the list. 
Uh, I saw people that were very happy that Duke Slater made it. Don Coriel also very happy about that. Um, I saw also there was many, many people that were, um, they were also happy about uh, George Young, but the love was not as massive as the hate. Because like you said, it's easier to hate than to love. Oh, absolutely. It's so much easier to try and pick on something than to try and lift something up. But that, that's, uh, that's who we are. Uh, one I'm really happy about, uh, personally, it's uh, Alex Karras. I love seeing him on this. Uh, who, yeah, uh, the, the, the one that I was sort of hoping to see, and, and I didn't, but again, I, I'm not really, because I, I try to be as objective as possible. I would have liked personally to see Elsie Greenwood here. Uh, who is the one person that you wanted to see that you didn't, that you feel the most passionate uh, about? Like, like players or just in general? In general. Uh, actually, in each, in each category. Um, well, if you know me, it's pretty obvious. Uh, Ken Anderson for mm -hmm. the players, uh, Clark Shaughnessy for the coaches, and uh, Carol Rosenblum for the contributors. Yep, that's uh, really, exactly why well, I, I thought you'd definitely be uh, mentioning Rosenblum before because you were really passionate about that in a previous uh, show that we did. Yeah, but I, I feel like if there would be any, um, if, I thought that would be any owner that I would have, like, you know, if there was no growth boom, I'd be, I'd be just as happy with hay. And we got Hay, so I'm not that upset that Rosenblum didn't make it because, you know, Ralph Hay, because, like, his contribution might be even bigger than Rosenblum. I just, I'm just not as passionate about him because I have a lot more in sync with uh, Rosenblum. And for Shaughnessy, I, I'm, I'm shocked because I really did think he was going to make this list, too. But at the same time, you know, I'm happy that Coriel's on there, and, you know, I'm also happy that Buddy Parker's on there. That's a, that's a nice, pleasant surprise. I mean, the Lions had that dynasty, and it's, he was essentially almost like how Jimmy Johnson was for the Cowboys, and I'd be down with that. I mean, give the Lions some love. I like it. If uh, what person on this list, if they don't get in, do you see the fan base having the biggest reaction, pop, uh, like from a fan base? My guess is Flores. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I would well, normally I would say Gratishar. However. I think by far it's Tom Flores, even probably even more than Cliff Branch, because oh, Tom totally. Flores, like, it's just like the passion that Raiders fans have for Tom Flores in particular is much larger than that of, of Cliff Branch, because Flores also played for the Raiders and he was also an assistant coach. Mm -hmm. So they have they put a lot of emotional energy into Tom Flores throughout his entire time with the Raiders. And I think Tom Flores, if, if he does not make it, you are going to see hell break loose. Now, granted, I'm fine either way. I, I like Tom Flores a lot. Um, I mean, granted, no no coach on here is more deserving than Don Coriel. Mm -hmm. But I agree. at the same time, like I, I definitely think Tom Flores has a really, really good chance, especially considering he made it as a finalist last year. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, Coriel is. Uh, I, I think he's walking in. I think he, if there's anyone on this list that I'm looking at that I think has the best chance out of everyone, it's Don Coriel. That, that's what my gut's telling me. He needs to walk in. He's been a semifinalist for many years. He's been a finalist for many years. The guy needs to make it easily. Period. He is going to just walk in there. Just, just, just no interruptions. No one in the way going to stroll right in and no one is going to be upset unless if you're a Raiders fan <laughs> so I'm going to make so let, let's do predictions so I'll, I'll give you mine so let's do coaches first uh, I, I'll, I'm predicting Coriel, Flores and there's only two coaches that make it there's only two? is it three contributors, two coaches? yeah, three oh, okay. contributors, two coaches Okay, well then I don't have to pick a third. Corey L. Flores. That's my, my that's who I'm predicting. I have the exact same prediction. Uh, what if what is your dark horse candidate for a coach? Jimmy Johnson. Uh, mine is yeah, probably him as well. Yeah, and it, and it's not that I want him to go over those two. I, I don't, but you know he's got the higher profile. It, it, it's. Uh, He's got the rings. That's someone who I think could leapfrog. I don't think he should, but I think he could. 
Yeah, I feel somewhat similar. Uh, one, if just if maybe I could say Buddy Parker, if you like go back because you know he also has two championships as well. That I could really see. Mm-hmm. And if they're ever going to look in an era where before Super Bowls, this is it. I mean, this, this is uh, perfect. I mean, you know, Buddy Parker he won two championships. I mean, it, it's not like the NFL started in 1966. <laughs> <laughs> the NFL existed long before that. I mean. Come on, I mean, you have a guy that's won two championships and, you know, played a big factor and with a coach for even longer than Jimmy Johnson, too. I'm just looking at uh, on Buddy Parker's stats as we speak. Um, just searching on Buddy Parker on my little laptop. Buddy Parker, in terms of his total winning percentage, um, was 577 uh, with, uh, with two championships. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson... Johnson right here. Uh, do, do, do. His winning percentage is his winning percentage is five sixty three. So yeah, Buddy Parker's winning percentage. He also has more wins than uh, Jimmy Johnson. I should mention. So yeah, yeah. Buddy Parker. I think yeah, like that could, that's a guy I could really see. I, I think that'd be a really nice choice. Yeah, it very well could. And again, I'd, I'd be happy with really almost every, almost any possibility. I mean, there's certain things that would make me happier, but I, I guess, yeah, if Coriel doesn't get in, that that I would, what, what, what do you kids say? It's my uh, down face emoji? I don't know. I don't, I don't understand emojis. I don't know how they got a movie. Uh, if Don Coriel does not make it, I will not be happy. <laughs> yeah, all right, agreed. <laughs> But again, I don't, I, I'm like super, I'm so confident he's in. I, I'm confident I, oh, he's in. I'm not going to vote about it, but I, I, I just feel like he's a lot. I, I, feel like I, I, a lot. I agree. I agree. Uh, with the contributors, I think it could go almost any way. Uh, my three yeah. predictions, uh, Hay, Sable, and uh, Kilroy. Uh, so, uh, uh, mine is actually Hay, Sable, and McNally. Mm-hmm. The reason why I have, you know, those three is because, you know, Hayes is pretty obvious. Uh, Sable, you've been seeing a lot for. And McNally, you know, this year's chance to finally add another ref- another official because you only have one official in there. That's Hugh Shorty Ray, that, who they added in 1966. And considering that officials are essentially the face of the league, and because that the Baseball Hall of Fame, the Basketball Hall of Fame, and the Hockey Hall of Fame all put officials in. Like, they have a decent amount of officials and referees in there. Football is the only one that doesn't have any. I want them to write that wrong, and McDowell is a perfect place to start. He was the head of officiating any any impl- implemented instant replay. In fact, many people would argue that the officiating has not been the same. The leadership has not been the same since McNally retired. And so, so all this instant replay, and we still get and they still get so much of that wrong. But that's it's me. A, that's that's me whining as a Saints fan. <laughs> um, they still could have won that game, though. <laughs> uh, moving right along. Uh, so, actually, who's your dark horse as a contributor? Uh, my dark horse is um, one that I could also see is George Young, but a dark horse I could really see is Paul Tagliabue. Now, granted, yeah, um, mine too. I, if I want to be edgy here, I would say Art Motel, but I don't see him going past, and that's not a biased thing. It's just that I just don't think Modell's going to uh, go past um, this phase. If he did, um, I'm, I'm going to just, you know, eat my popcorn and watch all the comments sections. But, you know, Tagliabue I could see as a uh, Dark Horse candidate. Uh, what's yours? No, it's the same. Uh, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not really, but I kind of want them to wait on this one. Commissioners, will, they always find their way in. Yeah. So I really <laughs> don't want them to take a spot of someone else, but. Yeah. You know, I, I, this sounds. I'll say. Speaking of commissioners, uh, this may not be popular with literally anyone on earth, but I'm a different person. When he retires, uh, kind of want to see Roger Goodell make the Hall of Fame. Uh, well, he probably will. I mean, Gary Bettman's in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Yeah, and everyone hated Gary Bettman. Though I should mention the impact that he's had on the game is immense, and also, you know, with um. With, you know, Goodell, the NFL 
oh, super probable. And also the international series, I think, and they'll, two teams in Los Angeles. I think there is a case there, but I'm not going to think about that just yet because, you know, he's, he's still active. So I'm, I'm not going to focus too much on well, that. Well, but it didn't I stop think, them from putting Gary Bettman in. He's still the commissioner. Well, yeah, but hockey is different from football. That's <laughs> true. That's true. I, I got other issues with the Hockey Hall of Fame, but that's for another show. Uh, so yeah. let's go right to the meat uh, meat on the plate, the players. Uh, so here, I'll give you my, my 10 predictions, not necessarily my 10 favorites that I would want, but where I think they will go is Roger Craig, uh, Dilweg, Emerson, Gratisher, Karras, Nobis, Slater, Wister, Speedy. Did I do nine or 10? You did nine. I did nine. Dylan. Nice. Uh, my ten are uh, Duke Slater, mm-hmm. Laverne Dillwig, um, Al Wister, uh, Max Beatty, Alex Carrot, uh, Roger Craig, um, hmm, Cliff Harris, mm-hmm. um, Randy Gratishar. Yep. Um, did I take Winston Hill? No, you didn't. Oh, then probably Winston Hill. And is that nine or ten? Nine. And if I were to choose a tenth one, uh, hmm, either between Tommy Nobis or Bobby Dylan. I know that's a bit of an. I know that's a bit of a. I know that's a little bit of a, a cheat, but no, that's okay. I, 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 no, that's yeah, okay. I can see either one. Too. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see at least. I think you're going to see two or three, at least, of the of the five guys of the Pro Football Reference Association uh, reports. And those guys are Duke Slater, Laverne Dilwick, Ox Emerson, Al Wister, and Max Weedy. I see at least three of those guys making it. Um, yeah, I do too. So yeah. It, and, it, and it could and be all of them. them. Uh, I really feel that Craig is has a great chance. The one guy on the, here on this list, I th- well, who do you think has the worst chance? Who do I think has the worst chance out of all the guys on here? Yeah, out of the twenty players. Um, I like I like I'll, I'll uh, t- I'm thinking it's covert. A covert, yeah, I was gonna say covert as well. Is him I think has the worst chance and Slater I think has the best chance. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also writing a wrong, uh, you know, both historically. And it, it's not the same as when the Hockey Hall of Fame, this might sound a little controversial, uh, inducted Willie O'Ree, uh, who was the first black hockey player. Willie O'Ree was, a, first off, if you make the original six, you were a good hockey player. But he, he didn't even make it for 50 games. Yes, he's a trailblazer, that's true. But Duke Slater was a star. Duke Slater was a star. He was so good that he was oftentimes the only black player in the league. Right, right. And, and, and he was a great player, like unlike O'Ree. And I feel... Sort of bad saying that, and I'm not. I'm not even upset that Willie O'Ree's in the Hockey Hall of Fame. I like it, but I wish he went in more in not necessarily as a player, but more as a like in a contributor section. He, he, would be, he made it as a builder. No, uh, O'Ree. No, he made it in as a player. Hmm. Oh, I thought it was builder. I could be wrong. Well, not now. I'm now I'm uh, questioning myself. There, I'm pretty sure he, it was in, inducted as a player. But you know, I, either way, I, I just. I, I'll take everything back if he was inducted as a builder. I, I but again, this is this is all about the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So neither here nor nor okay. there. Uh, the other check. person, I th- yeah yeah. If you want to check on that builder. while I'm looking he at that, it is a builder. He made it as a builder. We did make it as a builder. Well, I stand corrected. Uh, the other name on this yep. list, I don't see really. I, I I don't I don't see Winston Hill getting in. You don't. No. I mean, I know I'd like to see it. I'd like to see any of these guys get in. I just don't think that he's going to be one of the ten, the ten they pick. That's a fair. That, that's a fair point. I definitely think you know there. I think there's going to be a decent amount of linemen, offensive and defensive. I'm really curious um, by this because I think I think you're going to see at least one of the two linebackers, Nobis and Gratish, are now. These are also kind of the ta- the two tails of different fan bases. The Broncos fans are literally relentless about uh, Randy Gratisher, whereas mm-hmm. the Falcons, they want 
um, Tommy, but they're not as openly passionate. I mean, they are passionate, but not even close to level like Broncos fans are. Um, and but then again, you know, Gratisar was the head of the Orange Crush. Nobis was really the best, the a by far best player on a really bad team and went unnoticed. So it's going to be really, really interesting. Also, I look at the receivers on here. There's a decent amount of them. There's, you know, there's Dillwig, there's Speedy, there's Branch, there's Carmichael, and there's Pearson. There are five uh, receivers. I think two of them will make it. Uh, I think one of them has to be a guy from before 1960, and there might be one or maybe two, or there might be one, or maybe there could be one or even none from afterwards, like, you know, Branch, Carmichael, and Pearson. Um, which of these guys are you the most surprised is even on this list? Uh, Carmichael? Yeah, same here. Uh, yeah. I was really surprised by Carmichael because, like I said before in a previous uh, um, podcast, Carmichael may be second team all pro all decade, but Harold Jackson had the most amount of yards, receptions, and touchdowns of the entire 70s decade. And I'm not against Carmichael, but I, I just I just don't see him making it. I, I just don't. Yeah, I mean, um, I, like, I think Covert is the least likely, but Carmichael was my big was my biggest surprise that he made it here. And again, not yeah. not a bad surprise. Just that's not one of the names I w- I would have. Uh, Picked. I would have had twenty other guys ahead of him, but that's again, that's fine. Um, also, um, Maxie Bond's not on this list either, and I thought he would because they were saying, "Oh, Bond will definitely make it. Bond will definitely make it." Mm-hmm. And Bond is on here. <laughs> no, uh, he's not. Uh, Howie's not on this either. Uh, but I didn't see Howie making it. Uh, I saw Bond making it. I didn't see Howie making it though. Um, I, I didn't think that Novus would make it either. I mean, I know he's all decade, but I didn't think he would make it because, well, even though he's all decade, I just didn't know if, you know, he would get overshadowed by the. I'm happy that Novus made it. I'm mm-hmm. happy he did. I mean, hey, if like you can't rely on active fan bases for everything. <laughs> well, Atlanta is not a great sports city. Apologies to the no, people living in Atlanta, it, but it's not. No, it's fine. It, it's not. Like, I go there and, like, they're, like, kind of, like, indifferent to, like, the Braves. Like, they're kind of indifferent to the Hawks. And when it comes to Falcons, like, even though they are not great, a lot of their seats are empty. No, no, a lot of Hawks games are empty, even when they were good. Not that they've been good that often. And, they, and you know, twice the NHL failed. Yeah, I'm like, hell, I mean, Haw- you would think that basketball is perfect for Atlanta because – you know, the TNT headquarters are right there. I mean, the city itself is nice, and there's a lot of passionate fans, but there's not enough passionate fans. No, no. Uh, it it's, uh, does very well with college football, I notice. And does well with soccer as well. Oh, does it? I, I don't I don't follow MLS. I, of, of all this, I just can't add another league to my uh, sports watching. I just get too much. I keep wanting yeah, to, I and I just of- can't do it. I have a lot already. There's only so much I can really just watch. It, it, it can be, uh, there's only so much I can really watch. Um, also on here, um, I said Ken Anderson was the biggest surprise that was on here. Was he yours as well? You know, uh, no, for, for me it was Greenwood. That That's uh, someone who I thought would, yeah, I thought LC Greenwood was going to be on this list. Uh, but possibly they, they might feel that the steel curtain's already been represented enough. Uh, I don't believe so, but, you know, it, it's... that, that And I think my, maybe I got a bit of a bias coming in, coming in here. I'm trying to be more more open with that. I'm, I'm actually a little surprised, but, you know, in a, in a very pleasant way, uh, because there's always sort of been this bias that the, that the pro the football, is almost in general, has almost still punishing Alex Karras. Alex Harris has to make it this year. He yeah, needs to. Yeah, I, I think he should. I, I I hope he does. But you know, it took them so they had they had this vendetta against uh, against Jerry Kramer for so long that we're still not even sure why. And, and I, but at the same, I'm also looking at this too. There's four pre Lombardi Packers on here. Did you notice that? There's Dillwig, mm-hmm. Isbell, Lowell, Speedy, and not Speedy, Dillwig. That's four Packers. That's four 
Packers from the pre Lombardi era. But they're, and they're and they're all fantastic choices. They're all great. It just tells you that you can say, "Oh, there's too many picks." No, the problem with that is why would, you should not punish players that play on teams that aren't that good. Furthermore, you also should not punish players that were in a good situation. Why mm-hmm. should you do that? I mean, who cares if there was a lot of great players? I mean, why Why should they be? Why don't they deserve the honor? Especially sure. considering that it seems like the Packers were loaded. I mean, you even saw, like, people say they don't care about the Pro Bowl, but they clearly do. But they don't care about the game, but they care about the honor of being the Pro Bowl. And, like, if you always get the Pro Bowl subs, like, like a lot of these, I'm gonna I'm gonna use them for our future case. Like Gina Watkins made his eighth Pro Bowl, future Hall of Famer. Absolutely, I think this just feels that the fact that he has so much respect from his players and you know his teammates, I think that's a big reason. But also, you know, I look at some other ones like you know Dak Prescott didn't make it and Kirk Cousins didn't make it. Like a lot of those names, and the reason why I was getting like you know talk about the Pro Bowl one is because. Even though it's not as much as they used to, people still talk about Pro Bowl as a metric for someone's success. But sure. at the same time, over the years, hell, even Julian Edelman deserves to have at least a couple Pro Bowls by now. <laughs> this this would have been the one a, a good year for it. That, that's for sure. One thing I do like that the NFL does that I wish uh, Major League Baseball would sort of do. Uh, you can have no Pro Bowlers on a team. Major League Baseball forces forces are always to be at least one all star from every from every major league team and you get some god awful all stars. Yeah, like some really bad ones. Like here, I, I, I kinda like the way the NFL does it too, but like I said, I mentioned the Edelman. Now granted, I'm not exactly the guy that you'd really push for Edelman's Hall of Fame case, but I think, you know, Edelman should have like two Pro Bowls by now. Maybe even one or two, maybe even three Pro Bowls. I even in the case for him, I don't think Pro Bowl is going to be used that much. And if people do use Pro Bowl, people are going to like literally, it's going to be fierce. It is. That Edelman, I don't think cares about. Now, now, granted, I'm not exactly the guy that you would expect to really push it for Edelman's Hall of Fame. I'm not that guy at all. But I'm just saying, for future reference, mm-hmm. it's important to keep in mind. All right. So, one final thought here, Vinny, uh, from you. Like, so, yeah. where, where do you see this going from here? Do you, like, are you hoping? Well, I know you're hoping, but do you think that the Pro Football Hall of Fame will raise the amount of senior finalists from this in the future? Uh, well, in the past, well, originally back then it was called the old timers committee until Bob Sinclair said that he didn't like to be called an old timer. The reason why they changed it is because you know Sinclair also ate raw meat, so <laughs> he was a pretty fierce. So they changed it to senior, and they had one until finally, in like you know, the mid, in the early mid two thousands, they added two every year. And then when they added a contributor section, and they bumped it from like seven max to the eight max, yeah, they alternated like one senior, two, uh, one senior, two contributor, uh, w- uh, two senior, one contributor. Also, I think in the future, considering that coaches are in their own section, I think you might in fact see a section dedicated towards coaches. I really do. Um, it would really open up the door for guys like, you know, uh, uh, Cow or, or Shaughnessy or whatever. Um, but I could also see the modern increasing from like five to six because there is an influx coming through. But the biggest one by far, I would not be shocked if the seniors in, in, increase from like, you know, one or two to like maybe even two or three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I could see that. I'm hoping it's more it's than that, but I, I definitely hope that they, they trend in that way. Uh, so with that, Vinny, I guess the next time we're going to be talking is when they announce the finalists, which I believe oh, will be uh, early next year. Oh yeah, and uh, by the way, uh, what are your what I forgot to ask you this? Uh, yeah, what's your thoughts on all our Modell things? Uh, I, I under if I, you know what uh, if I if I was a if I was living in Cleveland, I'd probably be one of those guys uh, living in Toronto for as many years as I did. I hated Vince Carter for a good decade. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I get fan hatred. I tried not to be engrossed in that, but I have been in the past. Uh, Modell did a lot, and on his in his overall resume, he is Hall of Fame worthy. I don't I don't put him over some of these other people in the contributors. Uh, I kind of hope he doesn't get in this year just to avoid that type of reaction. 
But do you think, uh, I mean, what do you think of the reaction itself coming from fans, I meant? Oh, what do I think of it? I... I, I don't like it because you, you have your team. You got it. You have your team. Yeah, you, you know, you, you I feel like a lot, you, you, I think there's just buckers the fact the Ravens have won a couple of championships and the Browns have been bad for a while. You know, there's that too, because success changes everything. Uh-huh. And Modell was an influential part in uh, the NFL now granted. Do I think he's the best owner on the list? Absolutely not. I think out of all the um, four owners on here, I think his case is the weakest. I think Ralph Hay is by far the best one on here. Mm-hmm. That's not saying Modell isn't just, No, I think Modell is extremely deserving. But I would not want Modell in this, not because of, like, I don't think he's deserving or because I want to, like, you know, make fans calm down. It's just because I think there are better owners on here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, also, I, I, this one also I want to mention was a big surprise for me. Seymour Seawolf, Wolf, whatever his name is, that I was surprised by. A, a little, yeah, I, I was too. Uh, I'm not even that familiar with his career. No, no I, I, he doesn't even have his own Wikipedia page. So I, I almost didn't even know who he was at first. So he, he just, he's basically the godfather of statistics. He is a analytic. He was an analytics guru forever for football, baseball, basketball, hockey. Yeah, that, that's sort of what I was reading. He's almost like the Bill James of football. Yeah, but um, but Steve Wolf was Steve Wolf was a very very influential figure. Now, granted, do I see him making it? No, I I, I don't. <laughs> but hey, it's it's an interesting choice, and I'm definitely going to have him on my list. Um, I'm also a what contributor are you surprised that did not make it? That did not make it. Uh, Rosenblum was was one that I was a little surprised uh, he he wasn't here. Uh, Oh, yeah, I, I, but at the same time, even though I wanted Rosenblum very, very badly, I, deep down, deep, deep down, I did not think he would make an appearance that I predicted it, but a lot of it was also biased, too. So I was thinking that Bill Nunn would make it, personally, because there's a part of me that felt like Bill Nunn would make it because you've been hearing, there's a whole piece on NFL uh, YouTube that mentioned his importance to uh, historically black colleges and mm. Steelers, but yes. and that's why. Yeah, but overall, yeah. It, it, this is a it's it's like kudos to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, I think they've done a very balanced job here. I'm overall ha- I'm far happier than with than, than I than I could have possibly hoped for. And yeah, there may be a few that I may have wished were on here, like a Bond or Shaughnessy or maybe a Klecko or, or Anderson or a Frozen Bloom or none, but. Hey, I like the choices. I think either way, you're going to have a lot of people that are happy and a lot of people that are wanting to... I've been seeing some people wanting to boycott the Hall of Fame if someone they don't like makes it. I mean, Jesus Christ. Can you please have priorities, people? Well, I was looking on Twitter today, and then I just went down to the rabbit hole why everyone wants to ban uh, J.K. Rowling. So... Yeah, no. Yeah, I kind of, no. I kind of wish. Yeah, I'm not going to sort of like touch that debate here, but yeah, free speech is dead apparently. But <laughs> yeah, uh, it's going to be worse. I mean, you're you're fortunate being in Barbados. I mean, on Twitter, like, just stay off. If you're in America, stay off political Twitter. It's it, it, it's bad right now. I, I can't very, very I can't bad. stop though, Vinny. I I am obsessed with American politics. If I'm not watching oh. sports, I'm watching I'm watching something political. Oh, okay then. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, it's very big. Uh, I, um, I, I, I just, I'm, all I'm going to say on it is that it's something you're going to hear about with history books. But either way, I'd say that right now it's a very, very tense time. And yes, yeah, motel being in, and you know, uh, the, the situation is going to like a, a lot of emotions. And either way, I'm just going to be on the sideline saying this is going to be very impactful later on. Mm-hmm. This is a very big this person. <laughs> for sure. Stay neutral the whole way. <laughs> you're gonna get a lot more followers that way, but you're also gonna get a lot of people that say you have no true um, ideas or values, and it could be even worse. I mean, yeah, and, and that, the NFL. But I was called out saying like, "Oh, why do you want? Why are you?" Because I was one of the few people that were not blindly, blindly just hating on guys that were not that did not play the last twenty years that were on mm-hmm. the NFL. Top team because I'm one of the very few people on there that are 
you know, actually know that the NFL did not did not exist to, uh, in the in the age two thousand. You know, and that's something where I'm, I'm actually very envious of you. Uh, you ha- you work so hard to be as objective as possible, and as part of that, you don't actually. And I one of the first questions I ever asked you was like, "What's your team?" And you said, well, I, don't, "I don't have one. I just love everything." And it makes you you're. It's got to make the joy of being a fan so much better. For me, I'm so emotionally invested. The only sport that I'm not, where I have no team, is college football. And it's so much more fun to watch. Yeah, with me, I, I don't have I don't have a particular team. Even though I grew up with the Giants, and even though I may have favorite players, I'm more invested in the players than I am for the team. Like you know, I'm I'm more invested than Andy Reid than the Chiefs themselves. I'm more invested in Matt Ryan than the Falcons themselves. I'm more invested in Matt Slater than the Patriots themselves. Like mm-hmm. like that's whenever I'm looking at all these players or these people in general, I always look, how it's going to impact their Hall of Fame chances for literally everything. Literally everything. Uh, and that, literally. Ma- that makes you a better man than I, even though I see many times you're criticized, or you've been called for like being uh, fans of certain teams, <laughs> even though you say nothing to that effect. I love that. Sometimes just oh, yeah, watching dude. your timeline is just fun. Oh, it's even, it's even crazier considering, you know, I've, I've spoken to people that say, okay, what are the five biggest rivals for, the, you know, the, the, the Packers? And I named them, and then people are saying, they can only name two. They literally could not name them saying, oh, Packers fans don't fear. And I said, I'm not asking about Packers fans. I'm asking about you. And they, I mean, then they literally could not do it. <laughs> nice. All right, so we'll do this again in a couple weeks. Yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, Kirk, thank you so much, and congrats on your ch- your um, website going from three hundred thousand to two thousand six hundred. Uh, two sixty, yeah. Two sixty, yeah, yeah. Well, you get, you get the idea. Um, uh, it's it's, going, it's trending in the right direction, so that means clearly more people really want to hear the nonsense I have to say. Go figure. Oh, yeah. just, just, maybe it's me. I don't know. It could be. It could be. All right. Have a good one, Vinny. Thanks, Kirk. See right. you later. Bye.